Hi everybody, I want you to show the mechanism behind the traffic jam by means of this simulator. Let's start it with the first scenario, a ring. You see that the cars just go around the ring. However, after some time you see that a traffic wave appears. It seems that a traffic wave appears out of the blue, out of nothing. You can even visualize it better by accelerating it. So the question is, how does this traffic wave occur? So in order to find out, we will strip now the simulator to its bar minimum, first by reducing the lanes. So we have just a single lane. Now we also want to get rid of the trucks, um, just we set the truck percentage to say zero. Also we want to do it uh, more slowly, because when we see it better. And then to get an initial uh, control stage, we just uh, reduce density to zero, and then to say, um, 30, um, 8 or 9 kilometers. Now we have prepared it. Now I um, slow down a certain vehicle and now look what happens. The following vehicles also have to slow down. Um, first it seems that everything well went well, but after some time you see each following vehicle has to break uh, down even more severely until the fully developed traffic wave has occurred. It's just by the sluggish behavior of the uh, drivers. Here you see it in fast uh, motion. So also in one lane you have this um, traffic wave. How do we avoid it? We can just make the drivers more reactive by increasing the acceleration. And you see how the um, traffic jam resolves from uh, the front. So we have understood traveling waves. Often, however, uh, we have also encountered standing waves. How do they occur? For this reason, I just uh, will be mean and just drop an obstacle right in between the um, uh, jam. So everybody has to go around this obstacle, this building of a construction vehicle. We can again uh, make the simulation a little bit faster. And now you see, Instead of a traveling wave, we've get a, got a standing wave just uh, behind this obstacle. So, however, real traffic does not go in circles. So let's go to a more realistic scenario instead, the on-ramp scenario. And let's just evolve it a little bit. Um, here you do not need to drop down an obstacle, a construction vehicle. Um, the on-ramp, um, which is here, just will serve as a uh, bottleneck. So you see, after some time, the traffic jam um, occurs, traffic tray back down just at the obstacle. Now we go to fast forward, and um, you see that starting from this on-ramp as a bottleneck, uh, traveling waves, tra traffic waves occur. So. How does this look from the perspective of a vehicle? Just let's go more slowly again and mark a vehicle, for example this one. Now this vehicle goes down to a stop. We can ex accelerate a little bit. It has to wait, accelerates, goes down the next wave. It does not see the reason. For this driver it's a phantom jam. Now if the driver sees the reason, um, it's just the, um, there's not a phantom jam, but it's caused by the bottleneck. You can do a lot of other things with the simulator. For example, you can uh, make the road longer. Just you can uh, drag it, um, you can even um, one over the other. You can also add a traffic light. And uh, you can also switch the traffic light um, to red and um, green. There are more scenarios in this simulator. For example, an off-ramp. You can also simulate um, roadworks, which is just here a series of standing obstacles. An uphill scenario, where only the tracks are slower, where you can reduce the speed of the tracks and see where the jam will um, occur after some time. And finally, we get also a hot topic, dynamic routing. That's a main road with a bottleneck, and there's also deviation. And you as a user can control optimal um, usage of the deviation. For example, now I let everybody 
use a main road and a jam occurs, but now I let many people use the deviation, but you can do too much of a good thing. Um, so after some time the deviation just gets congested um, and so it's tricky to get the optimum. So you can even have a play a routing game which you can try by yourself.